Hi everyone, I hope you're having a nice week and I'm here today to talk a bit about a book recommended by Rincey of the channel Rincey Reads, uh, a humorous piece of fiction that I found lighthearted, frequently funny, and fairly personal, all while placing me within the experience of a man born in India but raised in the United States and tackling some pretty serious topics along the way. Before I jump right in, I wanted to reflect just a tiny bit about my reviews. If you just want to get right to the review, feel free to just click the timestamp to jump ahead. Anyway, after posting these reviews for about a year now, I've found myself a bit busy lately, and at least in the present moment, it's finally become a bit more difficult to post a full review video every week, which is totally okay with me, and if it comes down to me posting filler on off weeks or just posting nothing at all, I'm happy just posting nothing at all and dedicating my efforts towards the other videos. Still, I've also noticed that I have sort of a backlog of books that I've read this year and, and would like to talk about, but I'm now wondering if I'll ever get to as the experience of reading them uh, grows more distant and my memories of them becomes a bit hazier. I think part of this might be that I've read a lot of really good books that invite deep reflection, and as such, some of my recent reviews, such as ones on The Dutch House, The Remains of the Day, and to Cutter's historical work on the Cultural Revolution, have been fairly lengthy. I hugely enjoy discussing books at depth. It's part of why I started reviewing books here in the first place, because for a lot of books, my mind is just a whirlpool of ideas after reading them. But on YouTube, then I'm only able to find like two minute summaries of them within the context of other longer recap videos. There's nothing wrong with that, by the way. I just think there's value in having both short summaries and some longer, deeper explorations. The result, though, is that I'm spending enough time writing out my thoughts for these longer reviews that at this rate, I'm unlikely to get to a bunch of the other books I've read that were interesting, but that I just didn't reflect on and write about immediately after I read them. All this is just to say that I'm thinking of making some shorter reviews again, not really short, but like maybe in the eight to 10 minute length on some of these books that I enjoyed, but am never going to explore in quite the same depth. And I'll probably release some of those every other week or so, alternating with the longer ones. This isn't a hard rule either, just a bit of a thought about where I'd like to take things, so I guess we'll see. Anyway, this one will be one of those somewhat shorter reviews, and it's one that I enjoyed quite a bit. Members Only is a novel by Samir Panya, a professor in the Asian American Studies Department at UC Santa Barbara. That's in the U.S. state of California, for anyone who's not familiar with the UC system. Both lighthearted and humorous at times, while serious and thought-provoking at others, this book is the story of one really awful week in the life of Raj Bhatt, an Indian man who lived the first few years of his life in Mumbai or Bombay, but who then moved to California during his childhood and now in middle age has become a professor in an unnamed California university. We can probably guess which one it's modeled off of, but I won't name any names. The story, which is almost certainly inspired by many of Pandya's own experiences as an Indian American, explores the difficulties and also the joys of living as a brown person and specifically as an Indian in the United States, on one hand trying to fit in, while on the other hand striving to maintain one's own Indian cultural identity. Raj is a member of a posh tennis club called, I think just called the Tennis Club in his local community. He loves playing tennis, even if he's not exactly the best person out on the court. But this is more than simply a place for members to hop on a court and then go for a swim afterwards. It's also an exclusive organization, one that requires applications and vets its members thoroughly before admission. Raj is the first and only non-white member of the tennis club right now, a fact that makes him feel both proud and awkward, as he faces a lot of what you'd probably call microaggressions, but, but microaggressions that build up to be quite stressful for him, and he just isn't sure how he feels overall about being in an exclusive organization like this. But he justifies this to himself by making it his mission to diversify the members of the tennis club once he receives a voice in the new member selection process which has gone pretty poorly up to this point until the first instigating moment of the novel. A black couple named, uh, yes, the Browns, come in to interview for a position at his club. Raj just cannot contain his excitement and nervousness. He immediately, in his mind, starts making all these personal connections and identifying with the cardiologist, uh, the man in the couple, Dr. Brown. And then in his nervousness, he makes a well-intentioned but undeniably inappropriate racial joke that draws blank stares from everyone in the room, from the Browns themselves to the rest of the white members of the tennis club who feel nervous that this man is representing them to their new black applicants. Chaos ensues as the members of the tennis club scramble to try to get a public apology from Raj to make him resign his position on the admissions committee, etc., etc. You can imagine where this goes. And Raj, who is a lovable guy, but also sometimes you will be laughing at him as much as you're laughing with him, Raj basically doubles down and tries to explain why this incident should be the least of all concerns for a club that in his eyes has never made him feel welcome, has always made him in a way feel like the token brown person in the room, 
and expected him to speak for all non-white members of the world. Hopefully you gathered from this summary that this novel is interesting because it tackles these topics of racism, microaggressions, and cultivating one's public image with respect to these issues, but within a realm that is a bit more of a gray area and that brings in more complexities than we might sometimes see. Sure, Raj is at fault here, there's no question, and he owes an apology, but he's also right that the all-white remainder of the tennis club shouldn't be scapegoating him for this one incident just to make themselves feel better about having a history of non-inclusiveness. We see here a sort of critique of this case in which a visible resignation and forced statement are demanded of Raj in a way that not only cheapens but actually precludes the possibility of an actual heartfelt apology, one of which he is more than capable. What could have been an opportunity for an acknowledgement of his mistake, of a lesson learned, is escalated to something much larger in which it becomes more of a disaster for the organization's reputation than just a personal lapse in judgment. The best part of it all is seeing inside Raj's head throughout the process, as we're all given the opportunity to do here. And in doing so, we also find it painfully understandable, particularly as we see the awkwardness and insecurity and maybe you could say stereotype threat that he feels in this situation that differs from what the white people around him in the club are feeling and perceiving. But of course, given that this is a novel written for entertainment rather than for absolute realism, this is just the beginning of Raj's woes. In a supreme bit of irony, he soon finds himself now under attack from a group of his more conservative students uh, for something he says in one of his lectures that they wrongfully interpret as opposing Christianity. Thus, we see a discussion of university cancel culture at its finest, which in this case comes from the conservative elements on campus, but given the rest of the stuff going on in this novel, that feels appropriate here as it balances out the pseudo-liberal backlash that he's seeing at the tennis club. I don't agree with his students in this situation, and we can understand why Raj would be genuinely menaced by some of the stuff that they're doing, which really comes through quite well in this part of the novel. We really feel the stress that Raj is going through and the exasperation that everything seems to be coming down at once, which the author conveys in a very personal sense through Raj's narration. Still, this is the one aspect of the novel where I would have really liked to see just a bit more of an attempt to get inside the heads of the students and why they feel their Christianity is under attack here, or if that really even is the central thing at play at all. Raj seems to make an effort to empathize with his students, but is never really able to quite get there, sometimes due to a little stubbornness on his part, but I'd say equally so because he's genuinely distressed that a bunch of these students are basically clamoring to get him fired. So admittedly, in a real world situation like this, it would be a lot to ask for even a cultural anthropologist like Raj to take a deep breath at this moment and extend an olive branch, try to see things from the student's point of view. In the midst of this all, we also get a nice glimpse into the everyday personal and family life of an Indian in the United States. Raj lives with his white wife and their two kids, and we see throughout the novel the challenges of raising two young boys in both American and Indian cultural identities. We see the ways in which Raj's own childhood experiences, insecurities, and cultural heritage influence the man he's become today, and that includes his weaknesses. And in an excellent blending of author Samir Pandya's own academic expertise, a real cultural anthropological exploration of how racial tensions and challenges of living in the United States mirror some of the same tensions Raj has witnessed in his grandparents' city uh, in India of Ahmedabad. We learn about some of the recent history of conflicts there between the Hindu and Muslim communities living in the city. Within a broader understanding of why each side in this conflict feels the way they do, I felt these explorations fit excellently within the novel and really enhanced my enjoyment of it always feeling appropriate and relevant and reminding me that Raj's or author Samir Panya's experience and knowledge of the world are simply not the same as my own. And in a good way, but in a way that can make things challenging for them living in the United States. There are admittedly just a few parts of this book that I think should have been left out. For example, I won't spoil anything here, but Raj's interactions with a particular student from his class really felt like they just went off the rails by the end of this book in a way that was uninteresting to me and didn't enhance the story. I mean, I understand what the author was getting at in that uh, protesters on campus can really exceed boundaries and become an intrusion in one's personal life, but I think uh, our exploration of this character's motivations were not uh, quite enough to really make it worthwhile. There's also an interlude, a related interlude, about a particular purchase that Raj makes at a store in a vulnerable moment. If you've read the book, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. I certainly got a chuckle out of this whole scene and appreciate the way in which it genuinely tries to relate to a mindset and a decision that is often politicized and is probably not really aligned with the author's own decisions and mindset. 
But this also felt like a bit of a distraction in the overall novel, which really has a nice driving plot. But I think sometimes, uh, especially in the second half, pulls us a little too far off course when I would have appreciated even a little more exploration of the central ideas. In summary, though, I think this book was well worth reading. I'm glad for the recommendation from Rincy, and I'll link her review of it below. It's serious, but not too serious. Plenty of humor with genuine and personal explorations of an Indian American immigrant identity within a context that made this book different from anything I've read before. Let me know what you thought if you've read it yourself. And until next time, bye and happy reading.